Hey, what's going on? Chris Rosakowski here from TheEmailCopywriter.com. Uh, i got a pretty cool video for you today. This one is all about how to write product descriptions that sell like crazy. Now, this is one of those things, um, obviously, at my email marketing agency, Orzy Media, we do a lot of email work for clients, but we also have some other projects for clients from time to time where they'll ask us to do things like work on sales pages or landing pages or even ads, uh, and sometimes even things like product descriptions. And we've done a number of these. And uh, they're a lot of fun. And the thing is, um, whenever we're creating a product description, that is essentially just like that. We view it as like a unit of copy, like a messaging asset, right? And the reason I'm saying this is that when you have a good little messaging asset, like a good piece of copy for a specific product, it could be used as an ad. It could be used as a product description. It could be used as an email and the, or as a social post, right? Or as a topic of a video. There's like, it's really just about the hook and the essence of the product that you're trying to sell, right? So this video is obviously gonna focus on product descriptions, but um, it's really gonna be useful, especially when you're writing any kind of copy for your brand. Uh, or if you're a copywriter and you're working for a brand, this this will hopefully be pretty useful. And I want to actually show you an example. So we're going to start off uh, looking at kind of like a good example and a bad example of a product description. And uh, and I don't want to trash the the brand with the bad example again. I don't know them. Um, and it's it's decent. It's not a bad. You know, I shouldn't use the word bad. It's it's decent. It gets the job done. But I want to show you like let's position this as like good and then great. Okay. Um, so when we see, you know, looking, um, we're going to look at two pork products, right? So this is beefjerky.com. And I don't know these, I don't know this company. Uh, they got some pretty good SEO though. So they must be doing a, a decent enough job. They have this maple madness pork jerky product. I just took a look because we're going to compare that product description to the pork loin uh, carnivore snacks. And again, carnivore snacks is not beef jerky. Uh, so it's a little bit apples to oranges. I understand that. But I want to show you kind of how, you know, we're, we're going to look at the copy of the product description here. Um, so, you know, like I said, there's good and there's great. So, like, I th I'd say this one is good, right? Like, it kind of describes the product. Uh, you know, let's just read this. Actually, let me zoom in. There we go. Uh, sensational sweetness. Evoke holidays and perfect fall days with maple kiss pork jerky that will leave your mouth watering for more. A great breakfast. Pick me up or on the go snacks. What I like about this is um, maple kiss is a good little piece of, you know, power wording, great breakfast, pick me up or on the go snack is a little bit of a dimensionalization, which is kind of nice for over 20 years. Beefjerky.com has bought the freshest beef jerky around, or sorry, brought the fresh jerk, uh, excuse me, freshest beef jerky around. We select cuts of beef and our finest ingredients to ensure every bag is full of baller flavor bombs that satisfy your strongest snack attacks. So again, that's kind of like some feature benefit style language there. Can't stop, won't stop. Sorry, not sorry, friend. Fortunately, we're ready to ship loads more right to your door. So, this is, um, I guess it's like an attempt at humor. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's it's okay. It's not bad. <clears throat> I probably would have written this a little bit differently. But again, these people didn't hire me. And again, I'm not trying to trash them. Like, they've been around for 20 years. They probably do great business. Um, so I'm sure they're doing just fine without my help, you know. So it's not bad, like I said. But um, I guess this is kind of unique to their brand voice. And that's the thing with product descriptions. What you're going to learn is that when you're writing product descriptions, um, actually, let me move. I think my face is covered up. Um, <clears throat> when you're writing product descriptions, either for your, your brand or for one of your client's brands, like the thing that's going to be most important is understanding that brand's voice and what they're trying to achieve with the copy on the page. Because there's the product and then there's how people feel about the product, right? So when they read your product description, they're going to get a vibe for like how you guys talk, how you describe your products. Are you funny? Are you serious? Are you luxury? Are you cheap? Are you, you know, there's a lot of different ways to, to look at uh, voice and things like that. Are you authoritative? Are you more conversational and friendly, right? So there's always like sliding scales in, in many different directions. So this is okay. Um, I want to show you the one we did for carnivore snacks, though. And their pork line, honestly, this is probably my favorite out of all of the carnivore snacks products. They're all very, very good. It's a very hard decision, but the pork line is like crazy good. Um, so if you guys are into meat and you want to try some, some really good uh, meat snacks. These things are like pork potato chips almost. Um, and it's just pork and salt, which is really cool. Anyway, uh, so let's take a look. So this is the one that we wrote. And I believe Robert Lucas was the writer um, <clears throat> for when we were working on this account. So I'm just going to zoom in. 
Uh, so pork loin is kind of like that X who you swear you've gotten over, but still text at 2 a.m. every single time you have a few too many drinks. It's your dirty little secret. You know you missed them deep down your loins. Yes, we made that pun. <laughs> you might not believe it, but pork loin is most people's sneaky favorite carnivore snacks cut. It makes sense because it's a rich, fatty cut of meat with a deep, velvety, bacon-esque flavor profile. Take a moment and wipe that drool from your mouth before continuing. Feast your eyes on those beautiful strips of marbling running through the cut. Our pork Loin cut has the perfect crunch to melt ratio. It starts with a nice crispy crunch on the front end, but melts into a deep velvety umami flavor as you finish chewing. The Carnivore por uh, Snacks Pork Loin is made from 100% grass-fed, regeneratively raised meat, so you're getting the healthiest meat possible and doing something good for the environment. Convenient, our special cooking process lets us pack one pound of meat into a five ounce bag. Uh, number three, made with only two ingredients, 100% grass-fed meat and Redmond's real salt, no artificial flavors, preservatives, or chemicals. Um, so actually maybe this shouldn't say grass fed, should just say, uh, I guess pasture raised because I don't know if pigs eat grass. So we might have to just change that, uh, high and bioavailable nutrients, which promote better health, high in vitamin B12, to support healthy energy levels, low carb to support healthy body weight, high protein, to help build muscle. If you want a snack that can, you can post on Instagram with a pretty little filter, show all your followers how classy you are, and then go eat a summer salad because this ain't it. Try our new pork loin and find out for yourself why this is quickly becoming carnivore snacks, most popular cut. Click the buy now button and get ready to chat on some porky bacony goodness. Okay, so a lot going on here. Obviously, this one is a lot longer, probably about three times as long or maybe four times as long as the other uh, product description. But let's see what's going on here. So um, <clears throat> this one is like the opener of this product description is very unique. Like normal people are like, hey, it's pork. It tastes good, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, what did they say here? They said uh, sensational sweetness, perfect full of days, maple kiss pork. And like, that's fine. It's mouth watering, right? And that's kind of just describing the product. But this is kind of like telling a story a little bit, right? Um, and it's a little bit of a ridiculous story. And obviously, there's a little bit of edge with this brand. There's definitely a more fun, more like, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We like to make jokes even if they're kind of cringy, like, you know, you know, you miss them deep down your loins. Yes, we made that pun, like kind of laughing at ourselves a little bit. Um, so it's not as serious, not as buttoned up, a little more buttoned down, right? Um, and then we get in here, like we're starting to transition from the story into feature and benefit type language. And there's a lot of feature and benefit language. Uh, you know, the rich fatty cut of meat with a deep velvety bacon-esque flavor profile. And then this, like, I guess this is a form of dimensionalization. Take a moment and wipe that drool from your mouth before continuing, right? So that kind of like, that is a little piece of copy where like you're zoomed in on the product and then we zoom back out to you, right? Like I, that's the best way I could kind of describe it. That's what I, I guess I should come up with a name for this like literary device that we're using here, but, um, or that Robert used here, but it's kind of like involving the reader in the product description, right? Because they're reading something on a screen, but then it comes back to them. Um, feast your eyes. So again, this kind of language, this is more like giving a direct action, like, like they need to use part of their body to continue to engage with the copy, right? Um, and those beautiful strips of marbling running through the cut. A pork loin has the perfect crunch to melt ratio. Now, again, like, is this an actual scientifically measured <laughs> like thing? No, right? But it's just a way to kind of describe to you, you know, we could say, hey, it's crunchy and delicious and like okay that's fine because that's describing what it is but like how do we spice that up how do we jazz up that sentence right so we use we invented this neologism of uh perfect crunch crunch to melt ratio it starts so here's the thing too like your customer you know if it's a food product for instance they're not going to taste the product through the screen it's impossible right so obviously that's the thing with you know the one disadvantage that e-commerce brands have is that a lot of times you can't physically tangibly hold the product in your hand before it gets to you right so you're so that's why copy is so important for e-commerce because your words are going to demonstrate and describe and dimensionalize what the what it's like to already own the product or to be experiencing the product before they even complete their order Right? That's why it's so important because there's no, you know, a lot, most e-commerce brands don't have a physical store where you can go in and actually try a sample, right? So how do you do that? You have to do that with your copy, right? This is why this is so important. So it starts with a nice crispy crunch on the front end. So that's the beginning of the flavor profile. And then what happens next, right? So you're describing what their experience is going to be like. This is called future pacing language. Very good to do. Uh, but melts into a deep velvety umami flavor as you finish chewing. And then we just have a lot of... Uh, 
specific like bullet these are like bullets like yes they're numbers one two three four five six seven but really they're bullets they're the if this was a mini sales order, this would be the bullet section right um and these are all packing on the benefits of why you should get the products uh if you want to snack you post on instagram with a pretty little filter to show all your followers how class you are and go eat a summer salad because this ain't it so this is like a bit of a takeaway actually right this is kind of like drawing a line in the sand like there's us and there's them if you're one of these people who likes this you know, pretty meal. This is like this is for the more rugged person, the carnivore, the you know, the person who's a little more a bit of an edge to them. Like they're just going to eat a piece of meat, right? Like it's a little more, you know, I don't know, savage. I don't know how to describe it, right? Um, try a new pork loin. So this is a call to action, and find out why this is becoming carnivore snacks most popular cut. So this is a little bit of social proof, right? It's another form of social proof because obviously they have 134 reviews and there's tons and tons and tons. And you can scroll through and read all those. But uh, when we're saying, oh, this is becoming our most popular cut, that usually helps push people over the edge. Click the buy now button and get ready. So here, not click the buy, buy now and get it today, right? Like that's what people say. What if we attach the benefit to that? Click the buy now button and get ready to chat down on some porky, uh, porky bacony goodness. So we're attaching benefit to the action, which is a nice little piece of copy. So again, we had a good example, and then we have a really great example. Now, I wanted to show you two more uh, just to round it out in a different industry. And again, we didn't write these other ones, but, uh, and by the way, shout out to car carnivoresnacks.com. Check them out. They're really awesome. Shout out to Robert Lucas for an awesome uh, product description. Uh, so let's exit this out. So I wanted to show you a couple uh, just other ways to write product descriptions, because obviously, like, this is just for one particular type of product. Like, how does this, these storytelling and copy principles apply to different kind of products? And like, well, what's the opposite of... A consumable food brand well how about a clothing brand i don't know if that's an exact opposite but close enough so a lot of people in the copywriting world or at least in the e-commerce world well maybe maybe you've heard of jay peterman if you watch seinfeld you probably heard of jay peterman but they have some really awesome product descriptions and uh they just they do phenomenal their, their writing team they do a phenomenal job and what's cool what i love about them is like they use illustrated pictures for their products they don't even actually use photography so like it's they're really relying on the strength of their creative which i think is so cool and their product descriptions are pretty short but like they are just the masters of taking you on an adventure like that's what we're trying to do like with the carnivore snacks one we're taking you or whisking you away from your boring ordinary life into like this magical, fantastic land where you're chowing down on pork loin all day, right? And that's kind of like what we're trying to do, but these guys are the masters of it. And so we have this suede cafe racer, $700 jacket, right? Um, so let's, let's check out how they describe this, the racer. Two weeks in Andalusia stretching out ahead of you as empty and promising as the A397 into La Serenia de, de Ronda. Now here's the thing, like you might not know where any of these locations are, but you can kind of already see it in your head. That's what's so cool about this. Start on the coast in San Pedro de Alcantara, Alcantara, I hope I pronounced that right, and climb to the mountains. Just you, the bike, and twisting, winding roads. So like this sentence right here, you can imagine yourself wearing this jacket on the back of a bike, just like cruising by yourself, nowhere to go, just like exploring, you know? It, it, like with three sentences, they've whisked you away. Um, you never want to choose between destination or journey, and why should you? Not when they're both this unforgettable. So again, it transports you somewhere else, right? Suede Cafe Racer, more elevated than standard moto jackets and premium Italian goat suede, smooth Bemberg lining for easy on and off, horn buttons. So this is all the features, right? Uh, modified stand-up collar for Thomas Cool Factor, unique bellow pockets with top and side entries, spaded pocket flaps, adjustable side tabs, mented to waist pockets, by swing at the back for improved forward movement you, while riding, imported. So that's just like the nuts and bolts. Hey, here's all like the important other stuff you got to know. But So the first half is always like the the adventure and the second half is like the nuts and bolts right this is another way you can do product descriptions i want to show you one last one and, and then we'll wrap this video up because we're getting kind of long fisherman's pub sweater i love these cable nets these are awesome and uh their description is so good what is this here get out of here okay uh ireland of the comforts first there's the weather spring lasts a day february a year then there's the history equally persistent the spanish armada was a month ago the uprising of 1916 was yesterday little wonder the irish need their comforts breeding resilient Connemara ponies, baking more soda bread than anyone can eat, sitting in a dark turf heated pubs, sitting in dark turf heated pubs, honing their conversation, wearing wonderful sweaters like this. Like you feel like you're you're in Ireland, <laughs> you know, like, and I guess that's what they want. They want to attach that like emotional language, that story to the sweater itself. So like you can, you know, if you're just in the suburbs or you're in some crappy city and it's like you look out the window and it's just this boring metropolis right or some boring suburb that you're in you just imagine you're on this adventure through ireland right and like you're sitting in a pub 
drinking a beer, right? Wearing the sweater, like working with your hands during the day, you know, like, I don't know. Again, maybe everyone has a bit of a different uh, interpretation of how this hits them, but that's kind of like what I'm getting here. Um, and then, the, you know, the, again, nuts and bolts of nobody does better than the Irish. Nobody makes you feel better about going out to meet the world reported, right? So again, lots of ways to do product descriptions. I hope this video helps. Hope this video gives you some ideas for how you can rewrite yours and make them even better. Uh, if you like this video, I'm going to be posting more like this all the time. So drop a comment below. Ask me any questions you have about product descriptions. I will answer them. Feel free to post a comment. Please make sure you like this video too, because likes help the YouTube algorithm and uh, they help me too, because the more likes I get, the more I want to keep posting these. So please do that. Make sure you subscribe if you aren't already. Hit that little bell icon uh, and you'll get notifications as soon as I post a new video. I try to post one of these every week and that's it. And then obviously if you haven't subscribed to my email list, go to the email copywriter.com and I'll give you a free copy of my book, Make It Rain. Got it right here. See that? There's the book. Get a free digital copy of this bad boy uh, when you go to my site. So that's it. Subscribe, like, comment, get on my list. Talk to you soon. Later.